Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for taking the time to join us on this beautiful morning in Tlacopaki for what is now our 10th live stream broadcast from Rowe Gallery. I'm Ken Rowe, and as you remember, this is Snickle Fritz, and we have several friends in the audience today joining us. So if you remember from day one, starting this whole concept of the live stream, I wanted to document this commission for this mountain lion from absolute armature to the finished bronze. So let me let Fritzy go back to work and I'll show you what I've got in mind. So for those of you that have not seen the footage of the first oh, eight segments or so, I want to do a brief Reader's Digest version of what we've, we've accomplished thus far. So it's a one minute segment. Let me pull this up on my camera too so I can narrate a little bit. And I want to bring you guys all up to speed. Don't forget our good friend Randy is here to convey any questions, chime in. This is live, so we love it. So please do. Okay, here we go. All right, so um, we start with an armature. And so what I like to do is with the armature, um, it replicates the skeleton. So not only does it hold the clay up in this case, but it actually is a jointed armature that replicates the skeleton. So then what I'll do is I'll sculpt the bones and then I'll start sculpting the muscles. And then, let me turn this off, sorry. Sorry. Anyway, so then I will then start sculpting the hair over the top of that. The frosting on the cake, to me, is the face. I love doing the faces. So once I get things roughed in far enough, I will then go to the face, as you saw, put the eyeball in, put the upper and lower eyelid in, and then you know, it's just basically built from the inside out. So what you see basically is taxidermy. And that's how, that's how I learned. I'm sorry, I have to turn this thing off. Okay. That's how I learned to do this because this is how we were trained in taxidermy. You started with the skeleton, then you did the muscles, and then you put the, the hair or the skin in that case over the top. So now there's been a question that's been asked of me for... 30 years now, how long does it take to sculpt a piece? And until now, till today, I could not answer that, but this piece has made me track. So right now we have 380 hours and about 250 pounds of clay. So here's a really great news. I'm within the last week of getting this thing done. So I'm within 40 hours of having this done. Next Saturday, we're gonna go to the mold maker and he's gonna show us how he's gonna approach the mold which is a critical step in this whole process. So back to my finishing of this in, in the next 40 hours, let's say. Um, here's the issue. So now I'm sculpting this piece and I wanna finish the pause, but let me come around here. I can't get, I can't even see this part of it. So how do I get to that part to sculpt? Well, did you ever have a string unraveling on your sweater and your mom said don't pull that string? because it's going to kind of unravel. Well, that's what this string is. So. Hey, Ken, a couple of quick comments and yeah. people just coming in. Lisa Aronson. Hey, Lisa. Uh, good morning from Lisa and Ron Aronson in uh, Coconut Creek, Florida, as we good know. Good to have you back. Debbie Himsel, good morning from Debbie. Debbie. Uh, she just received number two of Vantage Point. Very excited. Yes, thank you, Debbie. So folks we already viewing and Tucson. enjoying the show, so. Oh, we're great. thrilled. Debbie, thank you so much. Okay, so I pulled that string, it cut the clay, and what I did was I segmented my armature, so now I can pull this off and work on the foot. So here's kind of a fun thing. I wanna also show you some footage of me working in the field with Simba, because um, as I work on this piece, it's kind of a sentimental journey of remembering every experience I had with Simba in the field, including working with his feet. So Lee, if we can pull that up, I'll show people how that worked. One of the things I love most about being an artist is meeting the animals I admire so much. And I can study the anatomy and physiology of these various species, but it doesn't come together until I see the real thing. And it's all right here, right in front of me. Now look at this majestic mountain lion. This defines the ultimate predator. Everything about him is designed for one thing, speed and hunting. Look at these feet. All these muscles here power that weapon. 
There's five toes there with huge claws attached to every one of them. The shoulder blades, all the power here, he's something else. One of the many weapons a mountain lion has, and probably the most important, is this right here. There are five toes here, and attached to every one of those toes is a huge claw. Look at that. Imagine the damage that would do. And these muscles right here are all connected to those weapons. Okay, so now, think of that experience. So, I'm sculpting this piece, and it's such a sentimental journey to remember Simba and that amazing interaction we had, and him allowing me to touch his feet like that was incredible. So as an artist, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, this is all information I need to gather to do the animal justice. So in that one segment, you see me rubbing its head. Well, when I'm sculpting that, I'm remembering how hard that muscle felt and how that jawbone sticks out here and how the eyes looked. And again, back to the feet. So let's just take this off now. Now I can work on this. So it's segmented for that reason. So also what's going to happen with this too is the foundry has to cut this off, which you'll see the mold maker next Saturday. He's going to have to cut this in many pieces, which is kind of hard to watch. But this will help him make a mold of the feet themselves. So I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to set it right here so you can see it. So that's just roughed in. I'm also going to do the same here. Ken, yes. Sylvia Herbert coming in. She's asking, is he sedated? <laughs> no, but I should be. Thank you, Sylvia. No, that, that was interesting because you, don't, you never know what these animals are going to do. So here's this. This, this one comes off too. But um, nobody's well fed. Let's put it that way. So here's the interesting thing. You saw as I pushed on those feet, this is what's called the killer claw. That's the equivalent of our thumb. That's the biggest claw they have. Well, Simba wouldn't let me push that one out, but he uh, let me push these out. So I'll take this up here and work on it just a little bit and show you how I'm going to work on this. Put this here. All right, now. Let me get my tools, my glasses. So if you, if you noticed, a lot of the, this area in here is a lot of hair. And a lot of people think, well, the, uh, well, here's a, here's a common thing. I was hiking today and I saw mountain lion tracks in the trail because I could see the claw marks in the sand. Well, uh, that's not a mountain lion because mountain lions don't walk with their their claws out. Those weapons have to be preserved to keep them as sharp as possible. So that's why they're retractable in the way that you saw in that video. So the front of the foot is very well camouflaged where those little, those big claws pop out when you squeeze. So I'll continue sculpting on this during the week. And then let's see here, I'll refine the pads. I'll get the shapes the way I want and everything else here. I'll refine the face. And basically what you see is probably within 40 hours of being done. So it's a cause for celebration for me, but it's also bittersweet because it's so much fun to do this and remember the interaction I have with Simba along the way, hoping to do him justice. Like I said, the eyes, the face, and being able to touch and handle him was amazing. So last week, you remember, if you do remember, I talked about an idea my neighbor had, and it was to do something for the kids, or in this case, do something for the parents. So I love showing kids how basically, this is pretty simple to start with if you boil it down to its simplest form. So in the gallery, every week, we have kids come in and ask me how you do it, and I show them how to sculpt their own cat face. So on the 13th, a week from next Saturday, I'm going to put together a materials kit that will be on our website that you can go to. It will all be there. And I'm going to show you, the kids of any age, mom and dad, how to sculpt a cat face. So let me just show you quickly. There will be the clay. 
Ken Shelby Cube is thanking you again for letting us be part of this uh, process. It's an honor. It really is an honor for me. So anyway, common hardware store materials. A small piece of wood, just scrap wood from a scrap pile, doesn't matter. This is the hook. So it'll be on our website, rowgallery.com. Go to the events page, or you can just go on the Facebook icon and click on it, and we'll have all the materials there. So you have two weeks to gather these simple materials and get ready, because I guarantee your kids and you will sculpt the lion piece ahead in probably less than 15 minutes. So thank you again. I love you guys. We miss you. Come and see us. We're open. And we'll see you next Saturday at the Mold Maker.